So in that space, are you inside or outside? I'm in a different galaxy that's 500 billion light years away. And I'm flying there. I haven't landed yet. And we don't know about this galaxy and we don't know. I get it's a star. It's not a planet. It's a star. And it has this huge energy field around it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. It's where we blend spirituality and practicality to help you live a life of purpose and joy. Clinical hypnotherapist Simon Bowen is with us again today. He's going to hypnotize me so we can explore my past lives. I've never done this before, so it should be fun to see what comes up. Please remember to subscribe, leave a comment, and share this episode with your family and friends. Now let's go talk with Simon. Simon, I'm so excited to have you with us today. Welcome. Hi. Yes, we're going to have some fun today, I hope. Absolutely. I thought it would be just so interesting and fascinating if I could talk you into hypnotizing me and regressing me to a past life. Because, you know, I do past life scans where I see the person's past life and get information and all of that. But I thought it would be fun if if everybody could watch you do your thing with me and regress me. Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 go and we'll uh, get into it. I'll hypnotize you, and we'll step into a past life, and we'll see what comes up. And we've agreed that we're gonna see if we can get to the past life that is the origin point of your healing journey through lives. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, me as a healer. Yeah. Yeah, that part of the equation. And and everybody, I've never been hypnotized before. And Simon's my favorite guy in this space. He's been on the show previously, and I've been on his show too. And you, you just are one of my favorite people, Simon. I don't get to talk to you that much, but an excuse to have you on this show gives me a reason to talk to you. And so you have my complete trust and, and uh, you know, all of that when we're doing that together. A couple of questions just so that I can know what I've gotten myself into here. <laughs> what do people normally experience? Well, when you're hypnotized, it's, it's like a, being very, very relaxed. And the whole time you're hypnotized, you'll be aware of your surroundings. You'll feel like you could stop any time you want and you'll remember everything. It's kind of like a deep meditation or f- that point when you're in bed and you're going to sleep and you feel really comfortable and tired and it's a really nice kind of space to be. And for some reason, and I don't think anybody knows this, why this happens, but it's when you're in that state that we can kind of bypass your conscious and get to your subconscious and that's where all the past life memories can come through and uh, it's, it's just amazing what shows up okay so will I be telling you what I'm seeing will you be asking me questions and I'll be telling you what I'm seeing yeah because I, I have the hypnotic induction where I describe everything for you and then when it gets to the point of entering the past life I stop completely and I have to try and keep my questions very basic, can't do any leading, can't suggest anything to you. There's, there's a couple of times where there may be a little bit of leading, but it's, it's almost like, uh, say, okay, now take yourself to the next relevant memory, or I'll count down from five to zero, and you'll move to a significant event in that life. So that's kind of leading you, but it's not saying, okay, so you're going to find yourself in the dining room and you're having dinner and there'll be two children there and it's 1964 and, you know, there's none of that. Okay. And then I'm going to tell you stuff and so you'll lead me so we'll get information about that. And then you bring me out, right? You're not going to mess up my brain for the rest of my life. <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I don't think that's ever happened. Um, yeah. One of the things is this... All this stuff comes up in your mind's eye, you know, in your imagination. Right. And it can feel like you're just making it up because, you know, that's what we do with our imagination, isn't it? We just make stuff up. 
but I, I would imagine somebody with your background, you know that you, you can trust this stuff because you've learned to trust things as, uh, through what you do, that, that uh, you get an image of yourself somewhere. And sometimes it, it jumps. It's like you're seeing through your eyes what's going on around you. And then other times you could be watching who you are in that past life, doing something. You get these different perspectives. And I wonder sometimes if that's the spirit guides they're showing you stuff in a certain way on purpose to get the message across to you that they're trying, you know, that they'll be trying to help you. They'll show you what's really good for you. They'll never show you anything that's bad for you. Okay. And will my eyes be open or will they be closed or both? I'll be closed the whole time. Okay. All right. So we'll do that. And then I'm trying to think if there are any other questions. Normally there are takeaways from this, right, there are commonalities that maybe have something to do with what is going on in my current life. So at least when I do past life scans, that we always look for the commonalities and they're always there. Do you find the same thing? A lot of the time. It depends what we're trying to do. But there may, I've had, uh, so an example is, there was a lady that came to me and she wanted to know about her relationship with her mother because in this life it's terrible. And she went back to a past life where it was the same. She was the daughter, this soul was her mother, and it was a terrible relationship there. But the way that relationship worked in that life gave her loads of insight into how a, why a mother behaved the way she did in this life. Okay. And she emailed me maybe two or three weeks after the session, and she said, you know, I went to my mother's for dinner the other night, and it's the first time in 20 years I've gone through the door and not felt angry straight away. She, she had a whole different perspective on her, her mum's behavior. It really helped. Yeah. Will, will my main spare guide, Pope Clement VI, come in, do you think? He might do. You know, it's up to him. We, we will try and get to that space where we could meet him. Sometimes we get into this spiritual space uh, the space between lives, and other people show up. I've had people say it's their grandmother or grandfather, and they've seen their pets there. Or it, they say it seems more like an angel than a spirit guide is with them. Okay. So we'll, we'll just see what happens. Clement always shows up with his Pope hat on. And I tease him about that, Simon. I would say, I know who you are after all these years. You don't have to wear the hat. He goes, yeah, but it looks good, don't you think? <laughs> He's hilarious. So, okay, what do you need me to do? Yeah, so I'll be doing the hypnotic indu induction. You just need to follow my guidance. Okay. You need to get really nice and comfortable. All right. Eyes closed. And it, it's, uh, it's a thing when I was being trained to do clinical hypnotherapy, the guy that was training us in the college, he, he kind of made a joke. He says, uh, hypnotists, they always start doing their smooth FM voice, you know, which is kind of dusky and uh, hypnotic so uh, so uh, yeah so I, I take you through this induction I take my time with it and it's it's like I slow down in the way I speak and uh, get almost like a deeper voice and closer to the microphone and and uh, it's very hypnotic apparently but you have a anyway. smooth FM voice on a regular day so I'm, <laughs> I'm eager to hear what it sounds like with this and see see what happens. So you're not going to hold like a, a like a, um, a pocket watch and have me watch it go back and forth, <laughs> swing no, back and forth. No, that does kind of work sometimes. I just yeah, I was just to say I was in the college and our tutor was training us. He put somebody in hypnosis in like one second with a trick he had. It was just amazing. What was the All trick? Different. Well, he he. He went up to the guy and uh, he went up to shake his hand and the other guy put his hand out and he quickly grabbed his hand and went like this, pushed it at his face and said, sleep. And that was it. The guy was hypnotized. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So if you get comfortable, close your eyes. And so we'll start off. You just focus on your breathing and step through into that past life. So in that space, are you inside or outside? I'm in a different galaxy that's 500 billion light years away. 
okay, this is great. So, do you find yourself in a location on a planet? It, I can see this. It's a star, actually, and I'm flying through this the galaxies. I mean, I can see lots of stars and planets and stuff, and I'm flying there. I haven't landed yet, but I'm, I'm heading there fast, you know, speed of light kind of a thing. And we don't know about this galaxy and we don't know. Is it, I get it's a star. It's not a planet. It's a star, which is interesting. Um, I haven't, I haven't arrived yet. I'm getting close. And it has this huge energy field around it. I mean, it's just massive. The star in the center is really bright, but the energy field around it is just massive. So we're going to come into that first. I'm not in any kind of a ship or anything. It's just me doing this. And Pope Clement, who's my spirit guide, Pope Clement the Sixth, he always has his shepherd's rod with him. Of course, he's got his Pope hat on, but he lowers the shepherd rod when there's a healing happening or in this case, past life. And so he's lowered it. It's kind of like, okay, that sets sets everything in motion. I've seen it hundreds of times over the years with him. And I'm seeing that now. All right, I'm getting closer to the um, oh, this is interesting. I just got a um, like a protective shield bubble thing around my whole body. And I get it's a heat entry protector. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going through this outer edge. And I'm, oh, that, this is, looks like a wormhole. I'm going into a wormhole and I'm going down into the center of the star. So let's see what's happening there. So do you find yourself in that space as a physical being or are you more like a an energy being? Energy. Yeah. 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 It's my spirit. So I'm going in there. Okay. So I've, Landed in this space, doesn't really look like a room. It's just this open space, and it's um, it's lit. It's it's it looks like daylight. There aren't any lights or lamps or anything, but I can see all these molecules and atoms and quarks and stuff, and they're different sizes. And they're moving around me really fast, not necessarily in the atom configuration with those those oval rings, you know, that we'll see in an atom that's depicted by scientists. But these are, and they're going through me and they're traveling very fast. And I'm I'm just surrounded by all these atoms and energy particles, and they are just particles of light, but they're in different sizes, which is interesting, and they're going through my body. It's like they're shooting right through my body, my body, my spirit body that's there, and what I'm watching is I'm watching my vibrational level, which I'm assuming is my vibrational level, is increasing because there's not only is my spirit body getting brighter, but it's also there's like a um, energy field that's getting very big as these different atoms and particles of energy are spinning through me. Okay, there's a there's a hole that's opened in the top of this room. And I can see very bright light. So it's coming down like a beam of light that's over my whole body. Kind of like in Star Trek when they get in the that whatever that machine is and they're saying, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> that's what it looks like. 
but it's this brilliant yellowish whitish light that's coming and and it's making the particulates not so much around me that are flying around me and flying through me but the particulates that now are in my body it's making them vibrate really fast uh like super fast it's your spirit guide hope clement is he still with you clement is watching this but outside of the room when i when i got to the garden he was in the garden with me and then as i was walking down the steps he was watching it kind of like in a crystal ball like the wicked witch of, of you know the wizard of oz is watching dorothy and all of them in her crystal ball he was watching them in a ball like that and then when i was traveling through time and space to through all these galaxies but i don't remember. I didn't go through them. It was like I was just on this straight trajectory to this galaxy and this planet. Do you think it would be okay if I ask him some questions? Sure. Perhaps, uh, first of all, I should ask him, is it okay for me to ask him some questions? I heard absolutely. Would he be able to tell us what is happening right now? Why is he showing you this? It, it's divine energy being programmed into my spirit. So in all of my lifetimes, his word henceforth, I'll be with the divine energy at a super high, um, he's using the word capacity, super high capacity. He's saying that's what that yellowish, goldish light is that's come down when that area opened up and it came down on me like a beam of light. And it reminds me of what I see now when I escort somebody to heaven. It looks like this big plasma wall. And that's what this beam of light, and and once it came through the hole, then it expanded, you know, in circumference, kind of like a spotlight. The farther away you are from it, the bigger it expands. And it's it's um, vibrating. The, the light is moving. In, it's not moving like the spotlight's not moving, but inside the, the golden whitish light, it's moving. So it's energetic is what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. So would he say that what is happening here is in preparation for your life on Earth? Or does it go much back, back much further than that for preparation for many lives? Many lives, thousands of them in, in different uh, configurations. He's saying in different life forms on different planets and stars and stuff like that. This round is the human lifetime, but I'm using the healing that I've experienced and explored in thousands of past lives in this lifetime to help people heal both emotionally and physically. And he's saying too that that the whole concept that I talk about, that there's always an emotional component to healing is, is not really discussed, but it's the most important thing. And that I know that, and I know that from having done this throughout all of these lifetimes. So, okay, if, if we allow this to play forward, then what happens next? That I am continuing to hold a higher and higher frequencies of healing whether that be doing a medical thing or talking with a deceased loved one and helping the person who's grieving heal or, you know, doing a pet thing or doing a past life thing, whatever. But he he's saying that's why I'll see new healings all the time. And it's like I'm reaching higher and higher levels of healing when I'm working with somebody. 
Would he say that the energy that you have decreases over time? Well, you're, you're kind of supercharged throughout thousands of years. Supercharged. Each incarnation, the energy gets more charged. Okay. So can I ask him if it would be useful for us to see a past life on Earth today? Sure. Yeah. I'm feeling a little teary because I'm so honored and humbled that I have the ability to do this and have the ability. He's saying the big thing in this lifetime is not only for me to do it, but for me to transfer this energy to others, whether they're listening to my show or the ones that take my class get, you know, get really ramped up and amped up with this energy, this divine, he's calling it divine energy. But he's saying that anybody that listens to any of my stuff, <laughs> and he's saying how when I say that that time doesn't exist in the spirit world, time's a, a human creation, he's saying that's exactly right. And it's also people that listen to my stuff even many years from now will benefit from this divine energy that originated in this planet or in this star when a planet in this star 500 billion light years away. This is excellent stuff. So if, I'll ask him now if he can transfer you to a past life. On Earth, as yeah. in the human form. Yeah. He's saying, which one do you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> He's a character. Yeah. So perhaps if I can ask him to show you the past life that would be most beneficial for you to view today. I'm a doctor. I got, I'm a man. I've got a white, you know, doctor lab coat on. Do you know what year it is? Uh, I get 1958. My name's Jeffrey Skinner. I can read it on the lab coat. And do you know where you are? Uh, cardiac surgeon, heart surgeon. There's somewhere in America or is it Europe? Somewhere else? I heard, I heard Massachusetts. I heard I live in Plymouth, Massachusetts. I'm working at Mass General. I'm working at Massachusetts General Hospital, which is the is connected with Harvard. I teach at Harvard. I'm connected at at Mass General as well. So you you find yourself in this sitting in this past life. So what is it you're doing there? What's happening? I'm making rounds with patients, and then I just saw a glimpse of myself in the operating room. And I can see the big OR lights and the, there's an um, observation deck above where students can watch the procedure and um, working on somebody's heart. My patient's a man. And do you get a sense of being peaceful and confident in that role? Yeah, everything's running smoothly and it's all working. I'm I'm very um, innovative. I'm known for being innovated in innovative in the surgeries and the protocols that my that I use with my patients, and uh, and they're working. So I am the type of surgeon that thinks outside of the box, which makes some people upset or uneasy, but my patients have a really good success rate of healing. So do you feel that in that operating theater that you have any spiritual assistance there? Oh, absolutely. Spirit, spirit surgeons are above my head. What I see in this lifetime, guardian angels over the head of anesthesia, to, deceased loved ones 
are in the room, their spirits are in the room too. It's the same configuration that I see in this lifetime. In this particular surgery that we're doing right now, there are three spirit surgeons over my head. There are, there's another doctor that's assisting me, and then there are several um, like nurses and scrub, scrub nurses and techs that are in there helping too, because the patient's, the patient's having a heart surgery. And on, a, on an early uh, version of the heart-lung machine, which helps keep the patient alive while they're, you know, working on the heart. So if we allow this scene to move forward, to see it, a result on a successful operation, is it all quite clean yeah. cut? Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a forty year old man with um, a a um, heart valve congenital heart valve situation going on. Okay, so let's allow this to move forward. Then it could be minutes or hours, it could be days or weeks. Just allow yourself to move forward to the next relevant memory, wherever that is. So what comes to you next? I'm in my office and this patient is three months post-op and he's bringing me a big basket of fruit and goodies as a thank you. And it's, it's huge and it's so I'm sharing it with my staff. And do you feel at all that there may be some, I don't know, arrogance or, you know, thinking too much of yourself in this? Or are you really quite humble in this mm -hmm. life? Humble. Yeah. Believe, believe that I'm doing God's work. And do you get a sense of having a family? Two girls and a boy and a wife. And do you get a sense in that life that perhaps you don't spend enough time with them because you're working all the time or you feel you have a good balance? No, working all the time, but trying to do what I can to spend time with them. Boy's the youngest, so I spend the most time with him just because he's around longer. So if you... Focus on your wife and children in that life. Focus on their energy. Do you get a sense that any of them have incarnated with you in this life? Not getting a read on that. Uh, let me try again. Not as family members. Okay, so in this scene with the patient and the gift, how does that resolve? If you play that scene to an end, He's uh, released from care. He's in rehab and he's doing fine. And I tell him, um, you know, if you need me, call me. But you, you look great. You've healed great. You're doing great. You know, carry on. That patient is my son in this lifetime, my Jonathan. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to move to another event in that life. And I'll count you down from five to zero. And you'll move to a significant time in that life. You move to an event that's related to your current life. So moving now with five to another event, four in that lifetime with three, that's related to your current life, two, one, and zero. So where are you now? I'm on a motorcycle. There's a um, need for speed in that lifetime. I love, I love fast things, fast cars, fast planes, fast whatever, motorcycles. And I'm on a motorcycle and I'm on a backcountry road and I'm, uh, I run a stop sign and I'm hit by a semi truck and killed. Oh, okay. Okay, so just allow yourself to leave that body. 
Just let go and notice the relief. I see my spirit coming up out of the body instantly. So are you able to look down on that body now? Do you feel that this accident was planned as part of your life plan? Yes. And so how do you feel about that life? Do you feel that was a good life? Accomplished a lot. Yes. Proud of it. Sorry for the the um, trauma to the family, but experienced what I wanted to experience. And I was, and I popped out of my body instantly when I was hit. So there was no physical pain there? Mm -hmm. No, it was instant. So you feel your soul achieved what it set out to achieve in that life? Mm -hmm. Do you get a sense of anything negative coming through, or is it really quite clear and clean cut? Yeah, no negative. All good. Okay, so let's just allow yourself to drift away from that life. Just drift up and away. And just allow yourself to move. And your spirit guide will give you something new now. And just ask Pope Clement VI to show you another past life. Or perhaps he feels it would be better to take you on to the space between lives. And so do you find yourself in a location or is it just kind of a space of light? Space of light. Yeah. And are there others there with you? They're coming in. They look like light beings. Uh, they're all spirit guides. And they're light beings. And so the room that I'm in, it's not, I can't see any walls, but the space that I'm in, let me put it that way, it's like I'm in a, I'm in this sphere in Las Vegas where it's 360 around images uh, and it's moving very fast. It's moving counterclockwise, and these images are massive, and I'm in the middle, and I'm standing still, but these images are moving around, and they're moving so fast, but they integrate into my, my spirit. It's like I'm absorbing them. Do you feel there are images of other lives, or is it something else? Yeah. yeah. Perhaps I can ask Pope Clement more questions now. Do you get the impression that would be okay? Sure. Would he be able to tell you, what was the main lesson for you today in viewing that past life as the surgeon? That's where my interest in the surgical devices came in this life. And so I didn't want to be a doctor in this life. Already had done that in many past lives, in many incarnations, in many forms. Didn't need to do that anymore. But still wanted to be involved with healing and wanted to be involved with surgery, which is what led me to invent surgical devices and helping people now from the healing work that I do, but just in a different way. He's saying the stuff that I'm doing now is, is way more advanced healing than surgery is. Surgery is part of the healing, but the work that I do now, which is divinely guided, so it's surgery, but the work that I'm doing now from an energetic level is what helps the person heal and sets, he, he used the word sets the stage. So it's like been there, done that on the surgery thing, going on to the next more advanced type of healing. Okay. Would he be able to tell you if there's anything that you agreed to before you were born that you're not yet aware of? Uh, that 
healing on a global scale. And he's saying, I'm, I, I've stepped into it with this and I'm ramping it up and it's going to happen really fast. So the not just the physical, medical healing, but the healing with helping people understand they communicate with deceased loved ones, with talking about the 12 phases of transition and what happens when we're dying, that that's some of the most important work that I'm doing is helping teach people what's happening so they don't need to be afraid of dying and of the end of their lives. And that's unfolding on a global scale. And he's saying that it's it's going to continue to ramp up and it will continue to spread on its own. He's saying it's like the train has left the station. <laughs> you can't bring it back. <laughs> so is he saying that the whole world's en route to a, a major change that's coming soon? Yeah, enlightening, changing. Um, things are happening in throughout the world in all culture in all cultures he's saying in every nook in every corner and every it's it's that the energy and it keeps showing me the earth being illuminated it's like the earth has a new energy field that's making it brighter and a higher I'm getting a higher vibration from that he just said to me that's right And would he say that there is a a kind of schedule and that we're on schedule or is it we'll see how it goes and we'll make the changes when we need to? He's saying schedules don't matter in, you know, in the spirit world. It's schedule is a human thing. There isn't a schedule. It just all unfolds perfectly. There's not a schedule for anything ever. We think there is, but we're we're delusional when it comes to that. So would you be able to say how much of your soul energy you've brought into this incarnation? Because I, I, I kind of imagine that we as souls are so, there's so much energy that a human body couldn't contain it all. He's saying all of it, but he's saying um, that we're multiple places at the same time, all of it. And he's he's showing me what I talk about the energy field membrane where the body and the spirit are contained in there. And he's saying that outside of the body, the energy field is just massive. And then that energy field membrane expands and contracts, which is what I've seen with many clients. So he's saying that it's just, he's saying that my energy field is massive. It goes to galaxies, you know, far away. That's fascinating. So can we ask him, does he have a message for everybody that's accessing this recording? Does he have something for them? Everybody has the capacity to do this. Everybody is a healer. Everybody has the ability to communicate with spirit. There's no, nobody's better than anybody else. Everybody's on equal footing. It's where your interest lies is what help, helps you expand. And there's no schedule, there's no time frame, everything unfolds perfectly. If you want to learn how to become more spiritual, great. If you don't, that's great too, because time isn't a thing in the spirit world. So you got unlimited lifetimes to explore this stuff. So there's no reason to be stressed out about a purpose in life or following a soul's plan or whatever. It's just all just trust everything unfolds perfectly and that we get so serious and so stressed out over things that just don't matter, but we think they do. Okay. Well, we're going to move forward in a moment. I'd just like to ask Pope Clement VI, is that okay with him? It's all right for us to move forward now. He's saying whatever you guys want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're going to move forward and soon you can come back fully into the room and you'll be feeling great. 
because you've been able to experience this past life regression. So we thank your spirit guides and your higher self for their help. In a moment, I'll count you up to five. And at five, you'll come back fully into the room feeling good. So coming up with one, aware of your body, with two, into this time and place, with three, four, moving your fingers and toes, and with five, feeling good, ready to open your eyes. Interesting that I got weepy. Yeah. One other one other thing too, when I was when you had me going into the garden, Simon, reminded me of my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. Yeah. In the scene <laughs> where where Bert and Mary and the kids jump into the art on the sidewalk, the sidewalk art, and they just immediately jump in and then they're in that animated scene. That's what it what it what I watched happen and what it felt like. So did you get really good visuals then? Was oh, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. And it was, it felt very similar to what I've done when I've been working with my mentor. And I, and I do this on my own all the time too. I don't, I felt like I was very aware, your point about that. I mean, I was very aware I was able to I sometimes feel like I'm a, you know, I'm a phone line. So I'm here at Pope Clement and I'm seeing other things. I'm talking to you. And um, yeah, so I I don't need to be hypnotized to do that because I do it in a nanosecond on my own. So it was kind of a combo. It was interesting because I was very relaxed. I was surprised with the emotion that came in. Yeah, I, I see that quite often. And it's also a thing, people aren't really crying their eyes out and sobbing. It's like you're talking normally, but you, there's all these tears. It's, it's almost like there's some kind of emotional release or, or something's happening. But it wasn't, it wasn't um, sad emotion. It was um, feeling humbled and honored kind of emotion like, wow, I'm so honored. Um, kind of a thing, especially when I was getting charged up with all those molecules. That was wild. All those molecules that were flying through me. And then when they, it, it was like when, when enough of them were in my body, that's when the beam of light came in. It was almost like, an, you know, a whole bunch of them needed to get in my body first. And that's when that, that hole opened at the top and the beam of light came in. And uh, your spirit guide's got a great sense of humor. Oh, he's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I come across this now and then because it's, it's almost like when we're brought up in what, what you might say the Christian world, you, you kind of talk about heaven and you think it was all very somber and serious and, and all that kind of thing. But it, it, it's, it's like I, I've seen my spirit guide doing the Macarena and walking like an Egyptian and messing about and you know, it's it's uh, it's it's not that serious. It's almost like they're saying, "Come on, lighten up! Don't oh, take yeah. it so serious." Yeah, yeah. That I don't know what movie it's out of where the the line is, "Lighten up, Francis." Yeah, and and that's the thing that I'm really compelled to share with people is it's all about joy. You know, it's our spirits are all pure love and joy, and and. When I talk with deceased loved ones, I'll have their family is a client, perhaps a family member, and we're talking to their deceased dad or child or husband or whatever. Often they will say funny things to get their loved ones laughing. And sometimes they're laughing and crying at the same time because it's pure joy. And that's what I've heard so many times is, we're here to live a life of joy. And we get so bogged down in the minutia and in what we think is really happening. And it feels like it is from our human perspective. And yet it's all an illusion. It's like we're all playing in a movie, playing a part in a movie. Yeah. And I, I, I've been told that if it's your life on earth, is so short 
like compared to the in the afterlife of the people in the afterlife you're like oh, i'm going to have a life on earth now and they're like okay see you in 10 minutes but for us it's 70 years yeah yeah it's not even a blip on their radar is what i've heard so many times you know many many lifetimes let's say 100 lifetimes of 100 years may not even be a blip on their radar um when you know when we really get down to it which is interesting and have you accessed the past life as that doctor, that surgeon before? I haven't. No, that was new. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have I to did, do some Googling. Yeah, I did see my, uh, I did see a past life when I lived in Ireland during the potato famine. And I had a bunch of kids and several of them died because they died of starvation. I couldn't save them. And that was really, you know, really a, a traumatic event, obviously, for that. But it, it was interesting about, about, you know, always like got the extra 20 pounds to lose. And, and so one time I did a past life scan on myself and I'm like, okay, where's this coming from? And, uh, and I got the potato famine thing. So it's like my spirit's going, okay, we're going to have a little extra padding on there just in case you're going to do a potato famine situation again. So Yeah, I've, I've seen things like that before in past yeah. life regressions with people. Yeah. These past lives and the experiences we have, they're all about your soul coming here to experience all this stuff and to learn these lessons. And it's, it can be part of a life plan. I say it can be. It's not always. I think sometimes we go off plan. But uh, Well, I think the plan is to create, is what I've heard many times from spirit. And we have things that we want to explore and experience, and then our free will comes in as to how we can do that exploration. Let's say you want to come in and be a teacher, and you know maybe you're a teacher in a lot of different ways, even in one lifetime. Certainly, I've been exploring this healer thing for many lifetimes. And in this lifetime, it's good. The medical's there, and I do that a lot, but it goes way beyond the medical. You know, it goes beyond healing grief when somebody passes, helping somebody, you know, not be afraid of dying, helping somebody in figuring out what the past life was, like what you do. So it's it seems to be much broader. The healing is a much broader perspective in this lifetime is what I'm getting. Kind of like combining a bunch of other ones and then putting them into what I call my buffet of psychicness. Yeah. And it's interesting when you were doing the surgery in the past life, you knew that the, the spirit surgeons were there and all the help was there. And they're in the same configuration that I see now. So I, I believe that I've seen it in many past lives. And then when I saw it for the first time in this lifetime, after I learned how to do woo-woo, I was like, oh, yeah, that's how that works. I know, you know, I hadn't experienced that before, but that thought is coming into me now. Like, oh, yeah, seen this before. I, I'm fascinated with the galaxy far, far away, and it's so far away, 500 billion light years that we don't have a name for it and it's not known. Yeah, well, the, you know, the, the James Webb telescope is showing us there's so much out there. And it's almost like every few months you hear the news and they say, well, the scientists say they've got to rewrite the textbooks because we're finding out new stuff and the, galac the universe is much bigger than we thought and there's so many more galaxies than we were expecting. I know. What is it, like 100 million galaxies with... I don't even know. The number is just daunting. Well, I saw a thing. They showed a, a picture and there was like 100,000 galaxies. And they said, if you held your uh, your arm, arm's length and you were holding a pin and that's just looking at, that's part of the pinhead that, through that look, if you see what I mean. That's how big the picture is. And there's 100,000 galaxies in that pinhead that you're holding out. So it's, Cabillions, there probably isn't even, even a number big enough for that. The most fascinating part to this, the thing that keeps going in my head was 
that vision, Simon, of being in that room and it was just like regular daylight, like that, like what would you look like and what I look like right now. But these particulates that I knew were atoms and molecules and quarks and whatever else that were all flying around. And each time they went through my spirit, a portion of them stayed in there. It's like they were charging my spirit up. It, that's fascinating to me. I've never seen that before. I've never experienced that with a client. What do, you, do you have any thoughts on that? I don't, I've never come across that before. Yeah, that was and interesting. It, I wondered if that was before you'd even had your first life anywhere, that this was preparation for you. So before I'd ever had a life, I'm hearing no, I'd had many lives before that before that time. The, the, and then the other thing that's fascinating to me is how that went on. And then I could see my vibration raising because I was getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And then that's when that beam of light came in. It was almost like my frequency needed to match that frequency so that beam of light could come in at a super high frequency. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's coming into my head right now. Kind of makes me think that they couldn't put that beam of light on you because you weren't ready for it. Yeah. You, you yeah. had to be matched to it. Almost like when you need to brine a turkey <laughs> before you cook it. You know, you got to get it prepared for the for the cooking thing. What, what else was um, something that surprised you or, or was a takeaway for you? Well, usually just about every past life regression I've done, people haven't really been able to get that strong uh, an identity of a past life because you had that full doctor's name yeah. and you knew where they were. Yeah. Most of the time if I say to somebody, okay, well, what's your name in this space? They might say, it's Jeffrey. And I say, oh, do you have a surname? And they'll go, oh, maybe it begins with a W. I'm not quite getting it. So you, it seems like you you know you knew which hospital you knew the name you yeah. knew the job and so I, I think when people have work or when people do work like you do for you the veil is thinner so you get a more detailed connection sometimes and also I wonder if our spirit guides show us what we need to see in a past life and our spirit guides might think it doesn't matter what your name is. That's not why we're here. So let's not find out what that is. I'm not going to show you what your name is or let you know. That's not important. You're here to forget healing for this thing here. So they'll, they'll give you what you need and what's best for you. But I do that when I do past life scans with people. I'll get where it was, when it was. I'll get names. I'll get information. A lot of it we can corroborate with historic documents online. So that's very common for me when I'm working with somebody. So that's not a surprise to me that we got that. But the thing that's interesting is I don't even remember the surname. We'll have to go back and watch the recording of this because when I'm in different realities, some of it I remember, but a lot of it I don't. And I can go back and retrieve it if somebody prompts me. Like if I do a healing with you, I'm certainly going to remember you or a past life scan. I'm going to remember you. I'm going to remember a little bit about what we talked about, but I don't remember details when I'm in and out of different realities. And I'm finding that's the case. I'm remembering some important details with this, but I'm not remembering all the nuances. I do remember um, chuckling to myself with the Wizard of Oz globe that Clement was watching this scene, you know, like in The Wicked Witch and the Wizard of Oz, and the Mary Poppins thing, you know, jumping into the scene, like like Bert and Mary and the kids jump into that sidewalk art. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, so that's where yeah. the imagination comes in. And I, I find, too, that when I'm working with clients, and perhaps you do, too, and certainly this situation or this experience today, which was really fun, by the way. Thank you for leading me through this. 
I find that we're going to interpret things for, through our own frame of reference because it helps us understand it more easily, perhaps, when we're in the woo-woo space. Do you find that to be the case, too? Yeah, yeah. I think that um, the spirit guides, they know you so well, and if they're choosing a past life for you, they'll show you the scenes that really resonate with you and uh, will be most informative and helpful. And, you know, there's like one thing you saw in the past life there, that patient who gave you that gift basket, and you, you thought, hey, that's my son in this life? Yeah, that's right. I had forgotten that. Yeah, it was Jonathan. Yeah, you, so I'm you know, thinking... Yeah, center of the universe. We call him his majesty. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that the Pope Clement the Sixth chose that scene for you. He wanted to show you that and give you that information. Right. Right. Well, and the gift basket was big. It was massive. It was like for a, you know, a big group of people. Anyways, well, that was so much fun, Simon. What a, what a treat and a joy to um, have you lead me through that. I, I am honored that you were willing to do that. And as I said, you're, you're one of my favorite people and I had total trust that you were going to mess up my brain in doing this. Two last questions before I let you go. Why do you think we incarnate? Why do we incarnate any of us? I, I think it's because our soul is uh, wants the experience. They, they want to learn. Our souls, I think, are, you know, they're on a mission to experience as much as they can. They want to experience everything there is to be human. And they have lives on other planets and they, you know, spend time in the spiritual realm they're, where they're not having lives and they're learning the whole time. And uh, I, I sometimes think, you know, like you, you live your life and you work hard and you, you're going to die. And after you die, you think, oh, I can relax now. I don't have to work nine to five. I don't have to pay the bills. I can just put my feet up. And it's like, oh, no, you got work to do. <laughs> you get to the past life. But it's that kind of thing where your soul's loving it because learning is what it's all about. And they think it's fun, even where we're going through horrific things from our human perspective. I've heard that so many times from spirit. And they just it's just an experience. They tell me there's no right or wrong, no good or bad. It's just an experience and our spirit expands with everything. Yeah, it's that that kind of thing where I mean, I, I know I've thought something like this where you think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not coming back to Earth. This is the last time. Cause it's, and your, your soul will be thinking, this is fantastic. I'm definitely going back to Earth. So you've got your viewpoint of the human side and the soulful side. And um, it's, it's good to have the human viewpoint. That's, that's what you've got to do while you're here. Otherwise, you don't learn. Well, the what's that saying? Make plans and watch God laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thing. Okay. I do want to have you back and I, w I do want to talk about your experience in, in regressing people with past lives on other planets. I want to get into that. And I know that you, you've researched a lot of that stuff from other planets far, far away, like they say in Star Wars. So I want to have you back and just do a show about that if you'd be game sometime to come back and share. Yeah, your, definitely. Your, your experience with that. And then lastly, how can people learn more about you and your work? Well, my website is pastlifeshypnosis.co.uk. And what I do is um, I do a free consultation call on Zoom. So people can go on that site, go into my calendar and book a date and time. And we can talk for 20 minutes about doing a past life regression, whether they want it for therapy or they just want to see what comes up and just explore their past lives. And then, then, of course, there's my podcast, which is called Our Paranormal Afterlife. There's over 300 episodes now, and each one's an hour-long interview with somebody who's had some kind of amazing experience or is a researcher on this kind of stuff. Terrific. And I've been honored to be a guest on your show, too, which was really fun. So, yeah. all righty, everybody, that's it for today. Sending you lots of love from Sweet Home, Alabama. Mwah! and from the UK too, where Simon is. We'll see you next time.
To enhance your spiritual journey, click on one of the videos below and remember to subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your family and friends.